It turns out that sugar is a signaling device that can mess up our immune system and mess up our gut bacteria. And it does so in a really strange indirect way. You see, we used to just think that sugar was a nutrient that would just be, well, mechanically bad for us. But it turns out it has signaling properties that affect proteins that normally help support good bacteria. Turns out it kind of turns off these proteins so we can get overrun with bad bacteria. It's like an alien form coming into our body. Anyhow, we're gonna talk about your immune system because 70 to 80% of your immune cells hang out in your gut. So if you don't believe that your immune system is tightly regulated by what's going on in your gut, you need to sit back and enjoy this video because we're gonna break it all down with some simple, fun science that's gonna help out you and your immune system. Hey, I do wanna make sure you hit the red subscribe button and then after you do that, please hit the bell icon to turn on notifications. Also, I want you to check out this really cool company called Magic Spoon. These guys are super awesome. So if you're looking at like a low carb world where you're trying to reduce sugar and you're still trying to be able to enjoy breakfast, I highly, highly recommend these guys. Not only are they a sponsor of this channel, but they're just super, super good people. So they've created, or should I say reinvented cereal. So this is a low carb, sugar-free cereal that's utilizing allulose and utilizing really cool ingredients to actually give you a fulfilling protein rich cereal that tastes unbelievable. It's like you get to be a little kid again. So huge shout out to Magic Spoon, huge shout out to everything that they're doing. And I want to make sure you check out the special link down below so you can get a special price on them after you watch this video. So when you look at our collective genome of our gut, we have 150 times more genetic activity going on within our gut for our gut bacteria than we do within the human body for our human cells. What that means is we have more overall activity happening inside of our gut than we do in the rest of our body at a genetic level. It's almost like we are more bacteria than we are human cells. It's like we are the carrier or the host for this bacteria that is really the main focal point here. So when we look at our immune system, we have to know that our immune system has essentially co-evolved along with the bacteria within our gut to make sure that it's constantly in balance, right? So I want you to envision it like this. Your gut is sort of like Area 51, okay? You've got all these different alien life forms, your bacteria, that are just all contained there. But it's very important that they stay contained there. So you have immune cells, your military, that hangs out in the gut. That's why 70 to 80% of your immune cells are in your gut. Okay, they are there making sure that these alien life forms, okay, do not escape. But every once in a while, there's a foreign invader that comes in the body, like a virus or a bacteria, and your immune cells have to leave the base to go to war. They get deployed, right? So the point is, yes, most of our immune cells live within our gut, but let's explain it a little bit more. There's this thing called crosstalk, okay? And this crosstalk is where the bacteria and the immune cells communicate with each other. And the immune cells that are within our gut also communicate with the human cells to kind of say, hey, here's what the bacteria is doing, here's this and that. This is constant communication. That's why it's called crosstalk. But there's a level of translation that's there in a way to sort of protect the human body. So think of it like this. You have area 51 inside your gut. There's a lot of crazy activity going on but there needs to be sort of a translation between what happens in the gut and what the human body knows. It's almost like the military or the government is trying to explain to civilians what's going on, but they have to translate it in such a way to, well, protect the civilians, if you catch my drift. So how does this actually work though? What's going on? Okay, within our gut, we have a barrier and there's two levels to this barrier. There is a physical barrier and there is a chemical barrier. Now the physical barrier is made up of what is called epithelial cells. Okay, these epithelial cells are lining the gut wall and they communicate with the bacteria. Okay, then we have a chemical barrier, which is cytokine activity and antibody activity. We always think of a physical barrier within the gut, but we don't really think of the fact that there's like a low grade chemical warfare going on all the time to make sure, once again, that these aliens or these bacteria don't leak out of our gut and cause too much of a problem. Then of course we have the physical barrier being the mucus, which a lot of us don't think about either, but that mucus is like the physical hard barrier that's gonna make sure the bacteria stay in line. It's like the fence, right? The fence that keeps the aliens at Area 51 at bay. Now the epithelial cells that are within our cell use these things called PRRs. These PRRs are designed to recognize the signals that are sent from the gut bacteria. Is this blowing your mind yet? There's a lot of different things going on. And then there's these things called dendritic cells that stick little probes into the gut biome. 
to determine if something is changing. It's a constant litmus test. It's a constant test to see if, well, pathogens are coming in and if things need to get triggered. So you realize what a hostile, little crazy environment we have going on inside of our gut. And if one little thing is off, it triggers the immune system to just go on a high alert and trigger this wild effect. So if you're not getting convinced that you have to take care of your gut, then, well, keep listening. We also have T cells and B cells that live within our gut. T cells are quite literally the front lines of the immune system. Okay, it's the job of T cells to go out, identify an invader, tag it, and then send in the infantry or the cavalry to attack it. It's like the recon, right? The recon goes out, signals something, and then the airstrike comes in. Well, it turns out that T cells and B cells largely live within our gut. So if we're compromised, those T cells aren't as prevalent, which I'll talk about in a little bit. So what happens if your gut is compromised? Well, the main thing is if your gut gets compromised because you're eating the wrong foods or you're just uh, stressed out or you're sleep deprived, well, that gate or that fence that's keeping all the aliens in gets holes in it. And a lot of those aliens can leak out, okay? Now, your infantry, your immune system can work as hard as it possibly can to protect that wall, to protect that border. But if there are multiple holes in it, there's just nothing they can do. Those guys are leaking into the bloodstream and then your immune system has to go attack them. Let me give you another analogy so this all makes sense. And if you're tired of the alien analogy, I'm sorry, it's just the easiest way. You've got your Area 51. Aliens just escaped into domestic turf. Well, what's the immune system gonna do? The immune system has to react and it has to dispatch and it has to start trying to neutralize the threat that's escaping in your body. Well, what does this do? It means that if you do have an external or a virus or something that comes in, they're too busy trying to fight and corral aliens that they don't get a chance to fight the virus. Again, it's like if you're waging war on your own turf and then another country comes and attacks you, well, you're gonna be preoccupied and you're more susceptible to getting sick. I hope that this is making clear sense. So the only way that we can truly fix that is to control inflammation within our gut, which of course is going to be A, feeding the epithelial cells, okay? That means feeding the cells that are defending, okay? Feeding the cells that make up the wall. Well, how do you feed those cells? Short chain fatty acids, butter, ghee, coconut oil, really high fiber, soluble fiber foods that are going to create what are called short chain fatty acids. Those little cells that live on the gut barrier, that protect that barrier, that protect that wall, that fence, if they're not fed their short chain fatty acids, they get weak, they get decrepit, they're not strong, and they cannot defend from what could leak into the bloodstream. Remember, we have that first line of defense within the gut. Now let's talk about antibodies for a second because it gets even more cool and a little bit more complex, but I'll make it simple. IgA, that is an antibody that is largely responsible for finding a pathogen, coding it, and making it so it's somewhat neutralized so it can get attacked. It is an antibody that recognizes when a virus comes in or when something bad comes in. Turns out IgA lives within our gut quite significantly. Now, one of its main jobs is to regulate what is called gene expression of our microbiota. So it's like IgA's desk job or day job before it gets deployed is making sure the gut biome is growing and making sure the gut biome is healthy and not getting affected by negative things, okay? Well, the good thing is the more healthy bacteria that we have, the more IgA that we have and vice versa. The more IgA we have, the more healthy gut bacteria that we have. So when your bacteria levels in your gut are healthy, you have more antibodies. Makes sense? Means you have more troops that are readily available to fight a virus or to dispatch when they need to get dispatched. So if you have low levels of good bacteria and high levels of bad bacteria, you have low levels of IgA within the gut, meaning less troops potentially available to go fight an attacker. Okay. Now, let's take it one step further we have something called T helper 17 cells, TH17. These are T cells that, again, are designed to find and neutralize pathogens, but they're volatile little suckers. And when they go too far, they cause inflammation and havoc within the body. It turns out that once again, we need healthy epithelial cells to make sure that those guys don't go rogue. So you see how complex this is. We also, in addition to having aliens that can get into our bloodstream, we also have potentially rogue soldiers that can get into the bloodstream and cause problems. You're seeing what a clear analogy there is, right? It's so simple to explain when you use military and you use warfare as just an explanation for it. So again, one of the ways that we control that 
is with good fats. Okay, we're talking about the short chain fatty acids again. We're talking about the ghee. We're talking about, yes, the fiber. And even if you're a carnivore dieter, the fiber is definitely proven to support our immune system. But one of the big things that you have to focus on is what you can do to not compromise your immune system. Okay, not compromise your gut bacteria. It turns out in the journal Molecule, there was a study that was published that took a look at artificial sweeteners. They found that six artificial sweeteners that were in 10 different sports drinks all switched good bacteria to becoming toxic. It's like it mutated the bacteria that would enter gut to become bad bacteria, meaning your immune system, your immune cells within your gut have to focus on neutralizing the bad bacteria that simply got mutated because of artificial sweeteners. So use those in moderation, absolutely. Then we jump over to the sugar piece that I opened this whole video with in the first place. Sugar doesn't just affect our gut directly. Sugar signals specific proteins to be impeded. And these proteins would normally foster the growth of specific bacteria like Bacteroidetes that is a good bacteria. So basically it stops the feeding or it stops the birthing of good bacteria through a signal. The body sees the signal that comes in from sugar and it says, uh-oh, shut down the good bacteria. Crazy, right? Sugar is a signaling molecule. So fats over sugar, prebiotic fibers over regular starches, okay? Good, healthy prebiotic fibers over grains. Now, even if you're not someone that eats a bunch of veggies, even if you're consuming things like chia and flax and stuff like that, that is going to be the stuff that truly feeds your immune system. You have to feed the immune cells within your gut. And I know this has been extremely complex, but the gut biome is so unbelievably complex. But if you do these things, you can take care of your immune system and get back on the right track. Thank you again for watching, and don't forget to check out Magic Spoon down below. See you soon.